when you arrive, um, you're going to park your car and then when you've got to the Ketchrigger, you're going to leave it to your port and walk around the building and find our offices. Welcome to our new look office. Uh, when you come in, your boat paperwork will be um, all here. So pick up the one that for your boat, um, and then they'll have all the details inside. The office staff will still be here um, to help you through with anything. Your new look boat pack. So you're going to having picked up your boat. It's going to have uh, details of where the boat is located, the marina gate code, and the marina Wi-Fi code. It's going to be some details um, about um, the yacht here, um, along with what we would want you to do at the end of your charter. There's uh, a useful information pack or sheet um, detailing some useful information that you might need during your charter. Um, one of the really key things is our office hours number and the out of hours number and also C starts number. Then you've got the actual details of the boat um, and your handover paperwork. So when you go down to the boat you just need to make a note of any scuffs or scratches that you can see on the outside of the yacht and any notes that you have um, to do with the inside of the yacht just mark on here. Once you're happy with that a little signature. Run through the inventory on the boat. The red items are um, your safety stuff. Once you've been through this and it does go on to two pages, ring the office and our um, fleet team will come down and um, talk you through from the pontoon um, anything that you else that you need to know. On the return of the um, charter, make sure that you're here an hour, 90 minutes to an hour before um, you're due to exit the yacht. Um, there's some reminders in here about how we like the boat left. Let us know if you have refuelled. Um, in the joining instructions, there's some details about the new requirements for refuelling at MDL. So please do make sure that you follow those. Let us know if you've used the dinghy or if you've used if you've changed the gas. And then let us know if you've got any losses, breakages, damages or defects on your yacht. Just pop those in there. Um, we do like to know about any defects so that we can make sure that we can fix them. And then once you're happy with that, a little signature. So when you're coming up to the office, you will uh, we'll also work through all of your paperwork um, with regard to your security deposit and any additional paperwork that we've asked you to bring. Um, if you need any optional extras, um, please, we do ask that you've ordered these in advance to make sure that we have them ready for you, otherwise, um, and, and paid for in advance, otherwise we can sort those out while you're in the office um, and make sure that you've got everything and all the paperwork's taken care of. Okay, so when you finish with uh, Alex in the office and uh, done your paperwork, um, when you come down to the boat, um, go on the boat and go to the Red Bible first, which will be on the chart table, and make sure you go through all of the inventory to check that everything is there, paying special attention to what's written in red, because that is your safety equipment. Once you're happy with everything, then you can give the office a call and one of us will come down 
um, to, for you to sign the paperwork and to answer any of your questions or anything you cannot find that's on the inventory we will find for you um, so if you've got any questions then we can answer all your questions and also give you tips on the best way of taking the boat out from the boat Hi, my name's Andy. I'm one of the fleet engineers. Um, so when you first come down to your boat, on the chart table will be a red folder. This is what I call the boat bible. In the folder will be all the information about the boat and all the certificates needed on the boat for, for um, charter. So when we first open the book, it will have obviously the boat name, and then obviously the boat notes and ship, uh, ship's papers. On the next page will be the yacht specification, which gives you the yacht name, type of boat it is, year of build, the lengths, drafts, beams, uh, also call signs, MMSI number, cell number, and also importantly, the uh, diesel capacity and water capacity, especially if you're doing any long passages. On the next page, we have two pages which is telling you where all the equipment is you need to know on the boat, as in batteries, engine, how to, how to start, stop, where the shot off valves are, obviously where the emergency tiller, life raft, how to use the water tanks, the anchor windlass, and also the main cell, how many reefs it's got, uh, storm jib, and the helm. So all the information about the boat is on these two pages. On the next page, we have a diagram showing you where all the through hull fittings are, as in head sinks, outlets, toilet inlets, uh, speed and transducers. So you know if you get any leaks on the boat, have a look round by where the through hole fittings are or anything like that. On the next page, which is an important one, is one again showing you where all the safety equipment is on board and where it's stowed. Next to that we have another copy of the inventory, but to do play close attention to what's in red because that is all your safety equipment that is on board and it tells you exactly where it is. On the next page, we start going down through the boat papers. So it's just all the standard builder certificates, schedules, but an important one is your compass deviation card. So if you are doing any long passages, you just need to know the deviations for the compass. Apart from that, it is just all the certificates for all the safety equipment and shows you that they're all in date and they've all been tested. Right, now we're on Grand Crew, which is a Bavaria 56. So on entry to the boat, it's just a standard lock. So we unlock it, push the sliding hatch back. Now this washboard, if you lift it, push it forward, it will drop all the way down to the bottom or if you're in bad weather you can leave it in this position and then to lock it just pull it back up pull it towards you and let it rest right the battery switches for grand crew are there are three situated underneath the chart table, which are the ones you're looking at now. The two top red um, keys are the domestic batteries. The one below it is the generator battery. The next battery switch is the engine start battery switch, which is located at the bottom of the companionway steps. Right, the last battery switch is located in the forward cabin on the port side of the forward bed. It is the isolator for the bow thruster.
Right, the 12 volt electrical panel situated at the chart table. Uh, most of them are all labelled, so we have instruments, AIS splitter, stereo, anchor windlass, electric bilge pump, fresh water pump, shower pumps, a panel light, this is not used, fridge, and then down the bottom we have underwater lights, TV, and a cockpit fridge. On this side we have internal lights, we have stern light, bow light, deck flood light, steaming light, and masthead light. On this side we can we can scroll through um, so it's in English forward fresh water tank aft fresh water tank holding tank engine start battery and service battery for the shore power side of things we've got an RCD breaker which is situated next to the chart table seat just below the hole window uh, and it's all labelled one is for hot water two is for the sockets in the shout in the heads and three are for all the saloon and cabin sockets on the generator because uh, Grand Cruise fitted with a nice generator underneath here you have the switch which is sure off or generator so if we're going to use the generator we'll have this in the off position then we turn the power on to the generator with this button so we get this panel come up and then you just press start when the generator has started and run up you then switch this over to generator and then you can start switching on your electrical supply so if we put on our hot water you'll see now the generator should come under load there you go so that so as you run up air conditioning units this load will go up and up do not make it reach the top because it will cut the generator out so if you're using too much electrics it, the generator is going to struggle but before we shut the generator down we take all the load off the generator so if you've got any air conditioning units running you shut them down one at a time let the generator settle so I'm just going to turn off the hot water now to take the load off of that when all the loads off the generator just press the stop button and she will stop and then power off right with the saloon table it's an electric table at the moment it's in like the small table which is coffee table so to to open the leaves up underneath there is a black pour so we pull that down and then we slide the table that way up on the table top here we open up this flap then we can pull the table leaf over So now you have a big saloon table. Now this will convert to a double berth. So before we drop the table down, on the floor, either end of the table, we lift this up and we place this in here. Same on this side, like so. And then the switch for the table is located on the end, far end of the uh, saloon seating. And we just press it down. Now the table will drop down. And we just drop it down so it rests on these supports. When the table's down, you can then put the infill cushion on the top and you have a double berth.
Um, ground crew is fitted with three air conditioning units. So you have one air conditioning unit supply in the aft cabins, one air conditioning unit supply in the saloon, uh, and the other one for the forward cabin. So when you're on shore power, uh, everything is switched on ready for using the aircon. So we have a panel here, so this is the one in the aft cabin. So this one on the left is a power button, so we switch on the air conditioning unit. As you can see, this is just set in cold at the moment, so we can put it in auto. If you put it in auto, it will either, you can just set it just like your air conditioning in your car, so you can set it to a desired temperature, and it will, if it, it drops below that temperature, it will reverse cycle and heat the cabin, or if it's above that temperature, it would work as an aircon system. Uh, and that, there, there are one control for the forward cabin, one control in the saloon, and the aft cabin is controlled by just this one, so that supplies both aft cabins. And then to switch it off, you just power it down. Press the power button and it switches off. With the, uh, with the engine, the controls are underneath this, so this folds by folds back, so you have your engine panel, also your throttle and your fuel gauge. To start the engine, we put power on, and then we use the glow, no more than 7 seconds, and then start. stop the engine, press and hold the stop button so the engine stops and then turn the power off. Also with Grand Crew the bathing platform is electric so to lower and raise the bathing platform is this switch here but first you must remove the de the tender from the back of the boat but it's just down for down up for up in the chart table you have two remote controls this one is for the electric winches to lower the tender down and straight straight forward it's just power on the unit and then it's up and down we also, if you are anchor, we also have a remote control to do the swimming platform. So if you're at anchor and you're going to go ashore, you can then lower and raise the uh, swimming platform from the tender. As you leave, you can close it and as you come back, you can open it. With the bow thruster controls on Grand Crew, it's press the two on buttons together. You get the light come on, tell you the system's on. It's in the way of where you want the bow to go. So if you want the, go, the bow to go to starboard, we press the starboard one. There's a time delay. You can't just go port to starboard, port to starboard. There's a little time delay in each one, or we go to port. The power are off. Press and hold the power button until the light goes out. On Grand Crew, we do have an electric furler for the Genoa. So when we want to pull the Genoa out, we obviously take off of the slack on the, on the sheet as it unfurls. You have two buttons down here. One's got out and one's got in. So if you want to bring it out, you press and then you can furl it back in. Grand Crew has in mass furling. So up at the mast, we have the drum for it with a continuous furling line that goes back to the cockpit. So on here we have a locking mechanism. So it says up there, unlock. So in the unlock position, 
This will rotate either way for when you want to bring the sail out. But when the sail's out, if we just come up to the mast and pop it into the locked position, then that takes the weight of the sail. So if we need to reef in, when it's in the locked position, it will only turn one way. So therefore, if you will need to reef in, when it's in a locked position, when you pull the sail in, if you don't jam it off quickly, it won't unravel. It will stay there. With the in-mass furling, what you have is the furling line, which is one continuous line, which goes around the drum on the mast, which I explained just now. And we have a outhaul. So, to pull the mainsail out properly on an in-mass furler, we do not go directly in, head into wind. What we do is put the wind on the starboard bow so the boom will naturally lie over the port quarter. When you're in that position, we can then open up the two jammers for the furling line and then pull out on the out haul. When the sail's fully out, you jam them off and then we'll just go and put the uh, the drum onto ratchet at the mast. When we furl in, it's exactly the same way. You put the boom over the port quarter by putting the wind over the starboard bow. And then all we do then is ease off on the out haul um, with the jammers open and furl the sail away making sure you keep tension on the out haul so we can furl the mainsail in as tightly as possible into the mast. On Grand Crew uh, we have a Bavaria main sheet system which actually consists of two separate main sheets. These are the blue ropes both sides of the companionway hatch. So basically if we got uh, over on a port tack you use the starboard um, main sheet and on the starboard tap you use a port main sheet. Um, but you've got to make sure you've got enough slack on the lazy main sheet that if you need to dump the main you can dump it uh, if you get a gust of wind. The good advantage about this is when you're running downwind. If you're running downwind obviously you let the boom right out but then if you take up all the slack on the lazy sheet if you accidentally jibe the boom will just come across just over center so therefore you won't crash jibe uh, and it saves damage in the boom so that is a good tip take up when running downwind take up all the slack on the lazy sheet Grand Crew has twin rudders, so you don't have the big bladed rudder in the centre. Uh, you have two smaller rudders either side. Uh, the, 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 the disadvantage with that is when you're manoeuvring, in a head it's not so bad, but obviously compared to uh, um, a long bladed rudder in the centre where you can kick the back end round, this one don't kick as round as quick. And also, when going astern, you need to be, you won't get any proper steerage unless the boat is doing somewhere between two to three knots. So just be wary when going astern, you are not going to get instant steering on the rudders.